Now then, how are you doing? I hope you're well. Well, this is a last light winter scene that I've been promising myself for a while. I hope you enjoy it. Not everything went exactly according to plan though, as you will see, and I have a few hints on how to enhance your winter sunsets. I should also tell you that the full uncut version of this demonstration, along with step-by-step -step guides and other resources to help you attempt it yourself, is available to subscribers of my online tuition service. Well, details of how to sign up for that can be found in the description. In the meantime, here's how it all came together. In this demonstration, I'm going to be working from a photograph of a winter scene which was taken in Alta in Norway a few years ago. I love the way the glow from the sun appears on the surface of the snow, which isn't white but actually appears light blue. It's a warm glow enhanced by the presence of a subtle sparkle in places both of which I'm hoping to capture in my interpretation of it. So let's dive straight in. In fact, I want to start off with a cautionary note and disclose what happened on my first attempt. Not that there was too much that could go wrong. The plan was simple. Draw it out in pencil and then spatter some masking fluid at it to create the fine highlights in the foreground. Well, I was all set. The drawing was finished and I'd retrieved my old toothbrush from my painting box that I use for such jobs, poured out some masking fluid and away I went. And here's my tip. If you're going to spatter masking fluid using an old brush or toothbrush, be sure to clean it properly first. Needless to say, I was unprepared for the horrible, muddy mess that sprayed across my freshly drawn scene. Verbally chastising myself for such an unnecessary oversight and a rookie error, I proceeded to start again. Well, this is take two then. I hope you appreciate the trouble I go to just to prove my fallibilities and to reassure you that we all make mistakes. Or with the paint and the masking still wet, I did consider trying to remove it in the hope that no one would be any the wiser, but decided that there was a high probability I'd just end up making an even bigger mess of it. This is my freshly cleaned old toothbrush, all ready for the task ahead. It's worth mentioning that pots of masking fluid are best stored upside down on the head. This helps to create an airlock and prevents it from going manky. As you can see, all I'm doing is flicking the masking fluid at the paper by running my finger along the bristles, which is about as random as you can get. Well, I'm going to apply a wet in wet wash to the segments of sky visible through the trees. First job then is to thoroughly wet those areas with a big flat wash brush. Well, the first colour up is cadmium yellow. Well, note how I'm applying the yellow in a circular motion, leaving the area where the sun is going to be as white paper. Well, this is always a bit of a gamble though, working at an angle because the paint, of course, will have a tendency to flow downwards. So it's important not to apply the paint when the paper is too wet. Well, I've now moved on to the cadmium red, working it into the cadmium yellow from the outside inwards and downwards. My final color is Prussian blue. It should be acknowledged that Prussian blue isn't a universally popular colour. I've always liked it though, despite its various issues. 
Well, finally, before the wash dries, I'm going to lift the sun out with a twist of tissue. It's time to start developing that prominent layer of trees. Well, for this, initially at least, I'm reusing the cadmium yellow and cadmium red, but I'll also be throwing some French ultramarine into the mix. All of which brings me rather neatly to the foreground snow. One of the things that really fascinated me and drew me to this scene in the first place was the fact that the majority of the snow in it looks quite blue. I'm alternating between Prussian blue and French ultramarine. I love the way that these two colours always seem to work well together. Well, I'm applying it to dry paper, which creates hard edges, but by softening some of those edges off with a damp brush, I can create a selection of gentler contours. The other element that I want to capture here is that warm light from the glow of the sun, permeating throughout the scene right the way from the background through to the foreground. So, instead of leaving those snowy highlights white, I'm applying a warm glaze to them, mixed from cadmium yellow and cadmium red. I've already spoken about the need to reinforce the glow of the sun and to disperse the warm colours throughout the scene. Another way I can do that is by altering any small branches that are located anywhere near the orb of the sun. By switching the dark tone for a warm one mixed from cadmium yellow and cadmium red, it helps to accentuate the glow in that area. It's a subtle little thing, but the effect can be quite profound and looks better than simply having all the small branches appear as dark silhouettes. It's time to remove the masking fluid, a task that is as simple as rubbing it off with my finger. Well, care should always be taken to make sure you're not stripping off the surface of the paper as you do this. It's one of the reasons masking should be applied as thinly as possible. The thicker it is, the stronger it may become, and therefore the greater potential for disaster at the removal stage. One final little job is to scratch out a few patches of snow on the boughs of the largest trees with a craft knife.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that and that it may have inspired you to have a go at your own low light winter scene. Well, if you'd like to view the full uncut version of it along with hundreds of other similar demonstrations and projects, then all you'll need is a subscription to my online tuition service. Well, these start at only £9 per month or less if you opt for a single payment option. So what are you waiting for? And remember, if you do decide to flick some masking fluid at your paper like I did, remember to clean your brush first. Until next time, take care.